Up next, we have a dynamic doctoring duo. Doug is a scientist at the Alberta Children's Hospital. His research focuses on developing next generation biologic therapies for rare, difficult to treat childhood cancers. Craig is a researcher at the University of Calgary, studying how viruses can activate and train your immune system in an effort to better recognize and kill cancer. Please welcome Dr. Douglas J. Mahoney and Dr. Craig J. Uh, hi. <laughs> it's an awfully tough presentation to follow. <laughs> Just sitting here the, the whole evening before we get started, made a couple quick observations. Uh, one, science is not funny, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> two, I appreciate Doug letting me go first and dealing with that. I'm trying to figure out why the go button is red instead of green, but... Uh, <laughs> And if any of my students are here, this is on the exam, so you know, <laughs> notes. Um, so what we'd like to discuss today is how we see maybe future cancer therapies developing. And really, the, the, the bulk of the story is what happens when you put an immunologist together in the same room as a cancer biologist. And we beginning to ask, how can we better treat this condition that everybody is exposed to? So first, what is cancer? Well, in its simplest form, it is us. Cancer is our own cells. Our own cells, as they divide, pick up one, two, several mutations, and they begin to lose regulation. They keep dividing, they spread through the body, they cause tumors. This happens every day, yet we all don't have cancer. Why? Because we also have an immune system. And these little blue cells patrol the body, and they find cancer cells and kill them. So if we have an immune system, why does anybody get cancer? Well, as you can imagine, cancers come up with some ways to hide from our immune system. If our, if our immune cells could find the cancer, we could probably deal with it. But much like this frog, the cancer is essentially invisible sometimes to our immune system. Even when our cells can find it, it has ways of shutting down our immune response and basically terminating the, the immune response. So if our immune system can't get rid of tumors, how do we do it? Well, unfortunately, our tools are, are a bit crude. Um, we can cut it out or treatment such as uh, radiation or chemotherapy. As you're aware, these don't always work and there's often really nasty side effects. So this raises the question, if the immune system isn't very good at this, what is the immune system good for? And as somebody who studies the immune system, we know that it's really good with its natural enemy, these guys, bacteria, viruses. These are not us, they're different. The immune system really responds well. So the question is, can we use techniques that we use for infection for cancer? So what do we do for infection? Well, we vaccinate people. We can give you missing pieces of your immune system back. Or in rare cases, if your immune system doesn't work, we can actually give you a new one. We could do bone marrow transplants, give you a brand new immune system. And with that idea, we said, well, can we approach the same thing with cancer? What if cancer is actually an infection by our own cells? And with that, I'll hand over to Doug. Thanks, Ray. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so for at least a century, uh, cancer and immunology researchers like Craig and I have been steadily marching toward, toward this goal, very difficult goal of harnessing a patient's immune system to attack and kill their cancer. So uh, for the next three minutes, I'm gonna share with you a little bit of progress that's been made in this pursuit. So <clears throat> vaccines one of the defining achievements of biomedical research used for centuries to, to train your immune system, what a microbe, what a pathogen looks like, polio, measles, mumps, chickenpox, you name it, so that your immune system is better prepared to kill that microbe when it encounters it again in the future. Well, scientists have built on this concept uh, to manufacture cancer vaccines, which teach a patient's immune system what their cancer, hiding in their midst, actually looks like. Indeed, cancer vaccines are some of the most personalized medicines uh, in all of medicine, often designed from unique DNA sequences obtained from a patient's very own tumors. Antibodies, tiny molecules secreted from your immune system, cells within your immune system, and they have a simple job. They stick to foreign microbes with very high precision, sort of like a key in a, in a lock, and they mark them for destruction 
by cells within your immune system. So harnessing the precision targeting of antibodies, scientists have engineered antibody therapies that block the key signals that Craig mentioned earlier that cancer cells can send to your immune system from stop your, to stop your immune system from attacking it. So by blocking those signals, those antibodies remove the brakes on the immune system and allow your immune system to more effectively kill your cancer. Viruses, my favorite, Craig's favorite, tiny microbes like those that cause the common cold. Okay, these viruses, they survive and they grow by infecting cells within your body. And your immune system is usually on very high alert for these virus infections and attempts to very swiftly uh, and decisively clear a virus. Well, knowing this, scientists have designed synthetic viruses called oncolytic viruses. And these are genetically engineered to infect and kill cancer cells while leaving normal, healthy tissue unharmed. And when that virus infects and kills a cancer cell, your immune system is alerted not only to the fact that there is a foreign virus, but to the cancer that was just killed. Transplants, so much like having a liver uh, that's transplanted from a donor to a recipient, uh, one's, one person's failing immune system can be rebuilt by receiving immune cells from another person. So this happens often, for example, when a cancer patient's immune system is destroyed by chemotherapy or radiation. So once the stuff is science fiction, scientists are now using synthetic biology to engineer immune cells, harvest it from a patient, from their blood, to express molecules that redirect that immune system back toward their own tumors once it's transplanted back into them. And one of these strategies, called CAR T-cell therapy, was actually approved two weeks ago for use uh, for certain blood cancers in, in Canada. So Craig and I have called these and other efforts to develop cancer immunotherapies the cancer trial of the century. And it's not because they've played out dramatically in court, like the O.J. Simpson trial, but because they've been ongoing for a couple hundred years. This trial was seeded by fundamental discoveries of things like antibodies and T-cells and the development of vaccines for infectious disease. And that research laid the foundation for life-saving immunotherapies that we have today, developed over a century later, beginning with cancer vaccines that were approved in 2010 and now including antibodies and viruses and T-cell therapies. And what's really important to remember here, to keep in mind, is that nobody ever knew if any of this would ever work. But we were all very, very motivated to find out. And not just scientists like Craig and I, or the docs like, like, like Raj, but society at large. You have poured tens of billions of dollars into understanding the relationship between cancer and our immune system, and devising and testing strategies to harness what we've learned. And this is what we see as the trial of the century, the cancer trial of the century. Of course, it's not over. We've just started to harvest the fruits of a century worth of scientific labor. Um, how do we predict who will respond best? Can we build better treatments that work for more patients? Can we reduce the side effects? Can the immune system be harnessed to prevent cancer? So these are some of the questions that will be addressed as the trial continues throughout the 21st century. Thank you.